Hello everybody, I'm Abba Sood and thanks for joining my course on CIS Control version 8. So this course is specifically to make you understand what are uh, what are the 18 controls the CIS has provided in version 8 and how you can use in your organization. So today's first session, I'll just give you an overview of all the controls and going forward, I have created a separate uh, video for each and every control to discuss it in detail so let's start with uh, to understand what is cis cis stand for the center for uh, internet security it has been formed in october 2020 uh, to uh, october 2000 the this is a community driven uh, driven non-profitable organization it makes connected work a safer place for business and governments through our core competencies of collaboration and uh, innovation its mission is to identify develop validate promote and sustain best practice solution for fence head build and lead community to enable an environment that of trust in cyberspace cas empl employs a closed crowdsourcing model to identify and refine effective security measures with individuals developing recommendations that are shared with the community for evaluation through a consist decision making process at a national and international level ci has an important role in forming security policies in this season by maintaining cis control cis benchmark and hosting the multi-state information sharing and analysis center at a national and international level so let's uh, let's uh, directly start with the 18 controls of cis the front first control is inventory and uh, control of enterprise asset it talks about manage all enterprise asset connecting to the uh, to the infra infrastructure physically virtually remotely and those within cloud environment to actually know the totality of asset that needs to be monitored and protected within an enterprise so here it is talking about we should have inventory of all the assets inside an organization can be any type of asset it can be hmm, it can be i would say our uh, uh, our end user devices that can be laptops desktops it can be a network device that can be our routers switches firewalls or uh, endpoint security that is anti -mal malware data data leak protection hmm. so you know every everything every hardware which we are using and it, sh it should have a uh, mobile devices as well like there are mobile devices you know if we are um, giving you know external to our wi-fi access and they just come in and shoot for an hour and then then get out so for that everything should be available why do we need that if we have a list of all the devices then only we know what all we need to protect we we need to have a complete detail what all devices we have what are the versions are there what are the latest versions so if there is any new new patch in a patch release we'll try to implement this asap if we're not able to understand we do understand what are the vulnerabilities it has so that we can create a compensated control for uh, for that so to do that there can be you know a process you know when there is a new software comes it should be uh, through a, a central approving process so we can maintain an inventory or there are different tools can be can be used like force code is one of the tools which which has a discovery scan to scan all these things or it can be a combination you can use a logs of an anti malware antivirus antivirus logs of a firewall device logs of your vulnerability scanners so while having a combination of all this you can create an inventory of what all the tools you are currently using and that would be very very helpful this is a very important control second is inventory and control of software assert which talks about manage all software on the network so that only the authorized software is installed and can execute and the unauthorized and unmanaged software is founded and prevented from a installation and execution so here it is talk about whatever the the why the company authorized software we should have a list of that so only those software can be whitelisted and other can be blacklisted because when we when a user um, 
download an open source software and, inst and try to install it there are chances mal malware can be uh, come to the network through that particular activity or there can be any licensing or if it's not an open source licensing issue which can uh, you know if it is on a company asset it can have a, a different impact on the on the company so from that perspective we should have a list of softwares it also helps us to know you know let's suppose we do have an operating system if we how many uh, how many systems are on windows windows 7 how many are on windows 10 what is going going to be the out of service which we need to be installed what is the latest patch la level if it is not patched at the latest latest things what can be the, what type of uh, vulnerabilities it have what type of attack can be can be happen to that so corresponding to all those things it's it's very important for us to have an uh, software uh, asset inventory next we are data protection this talks about uh, develop process and uh, develop processes and technical controls to identify, classify, securely handle, retain, and disposal of data. So basically, uh, data is a new oil. Data is very important. And if we are talking about data, we need to classify the data. That can be the personal identifiable information. That can be your name, mobile address, your mobile number, your email address, your communication address and other things that can be your uh, credit card data pci data that can be your credit card number that can be your cc cvv number expiry data all those things that can be your other other um, other personal things that can be your salary your bank account and all those things so we need to identify the data what type of data is in our organization that we want to protect then classify it what we consider as a uh, I would say the sensitive data, confidential data, public data depends on and how you are planning to handle that, that type of data like public data. It can be available outside without any restriction but if you are having any sensitive data so you need to make sure how much you, you want to show it and if you and and you want to encrypt it who should be having the access of that it should be on a need to know, know basis segregation of duty or all, all these things should be there how long you want to retain it you want to retain it only for the 90 days there are some regulation which says 90 days after after that how you are disposing it off uh, so that you know it cannot be uh, you know if we have a data on your hardware it should be raised like that it cannot be recovered so for data protection is very important one is from a compliance point of view like there are gdpr ccpa or other data protection regulation that a company needs to be compliant with other companies reputation if a company loses a customer data it has a reputation loss and if that data goes to a wrong hand then then there can be other type of financial losses or there can be a ransomware attack where they ask for the ransom to you know give you share the key with you to decrypt the data this is our third control a fourth control is secure configuration of enterprise assets so it talks about establish and maintain the secure configuration of enterprise assets and software so by default when system comes to us it's it's more of like an ease of use but there are many things like many many uh, many uh, protocols many ports or many services which are allowed or uh, there is a default dns is there there are default credentials are there which we need to uh, which we need to change and which we need to alter as per our requirement if we don't do that and and put the system uh, put the asset or software on on i would say on on a real world then and then attacker can easily take the advantage of that and we don't want it that is our fourth control fifth control is account management this is we are talking about use processes and tool to assign and manage the authorization to credentials of uh, user account including administrator account as well as service account so it is like it's saying there should be a process how the accounts will be will be uh, created and how we are segregating our account as a, this is an administrative account so, or this is a, a service account or this is a individual user account because an administrative account is a privileged account the danger can be more as compared to an um, 
an individual account and we 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 should do uh, we should follow multi factor authentication so it would be difficult for a user to to hack it we should uh, we should look for a solution like password vault for uh, elevated access account and uh, we can go uh, we should go for a user access review on um, on i would say uh, the half yearly basis this is one thing the next control is similar to that that is talk about access control so you use processes and tool to create access uh, assign manage and revoke the access credential and privileges to a user administrator account so this is talking about when you are providing the access so in the last control you have created an account now you are providing the access to the to the control account there should be a process i mean you know there should be a multiple level of approval process to make sure a proper authorization is given on only on the least privilege on a need to do no basis and segregation of duties concept has been followed and there is a uh, a priority user access review is is uh, going on and if there is any any user who is leaving the organization you know the account should be inactivated and uh, if there is a uh, transfer of a user from one team to another then appropriate action should be taken you know old authorization should be removed and you should be given as per the roles and responsibilities so all these should be taken care in our sixth control so now we are talking about second seventh control which talks about continuous vulnerability management that is continuous assessment and tracking of vulnerabilities on all enterprise assert in order to remediate and minimize the window of opportunity for attackers monitor sources of new threats and vulnerable vulnerability information so here we are talking about you know all the all the i would say all the application and all the hardwares and softwares do have vulnerabilities so and what an attacker do attacker on a um, you know on a regular basis they are just scanning us uh, on, on different devices and networks and look for that loopholes to to do the attack so so this is this is what what we need to look into by ourselves while using the internal scan external scan internal scan is from internally we look into it what are our networks and what are the vulnerabilities external scan is externally from an attacker point of view through our public uh, public address we look into it what can be the vulnerabilities so we can achieve that while using a different tools that can be nexus rapid 7 qualis so we do we can just um, you know go through those tools those tools have their own discovery scans they look for what are the what are the different assets available what are the what are their configurations and you know the, they, they'll scan each and everything and then give us a good a uh, good result like these are the vulnerabilities so but it's not only about tracking the vulnerabilities it's about we are identifying the vulnerabilities we are tracking our vulnerabilities and how we are remediating our vulnerabilities and closing closing it so it's complete cycle can secure our um, uh, uh, our enterprise then uh, eighth control is audit log management so every system generates log that that can be our network system that can be our our uh, end user systems and uh, every like servers so what we need to do we need to collect we need to collect those logs create the alerts we need to review it we need to attain the logs of an event that can help us to detect understand and recover from an attack so what we need to do we what we can do we can create we can go for an sim tool that can be like a uh, splunk or cureda where you know these logs can be sync sync to this this tool and then then we'll generate an alert from that if there is any unusual behavior alert would be generated so uh, uh analyst can analyze and then let us know if there is any attack or not or log should be retained if there is any attack we can do the analysis on the basis of that term um, that logs so thank you for joining so remaining controls we'll be discussing in our uh, next session that is from 9th onwards in this session we have discussed about first state controls or first cis control billionaire